Hi, and welcome to part five of our Active Directory dashboard with PS Write HTML. So this is the last part that I actually had planned um, for the dashboard, unless we want to add more things um, as requested by you guys, the viewers. Um, I already have a few requests from viewers, so those will come after this video. Um, so let's actually go ahead and let's see what we're going to be adding in the last part here, part five. Uh, so in the last part, uh, we added the groups to monitor, uh, which basically listed all the groups in the different domains that we have, and then listed the members inside of them. And then we specified which groups we wanted to look at in our script. And then you also have the ability to easily search uh, the groups with the search box. So what we're actually going to be adding today is going to be the list of computers in our domain. So this will also include servers. And we're going to see a bunch of different things that we can actually do with that with the search feature um, to see how that can be useful. I'll show you guys what properties that I like to pull back for computers. And we're going to add that to our dashboard. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started here. So as like the users, um, the computers also have a lot of properties here. So if we actually just go ahead and let's just create a variable here called computers, and we're going to make that equal to get ad computer. And we're going to filter star because we want to get all of them. And let's get all the properties first, just to make sure that we actually know all the different properties. And then let's just do domain. So our domain here should already have our domain of jack.ca. And let's see what get AD computer gives us here. Uh, so dash properties. Uh, as you can see, we get a lot of properties back. Um, now, the only properties that I really like, I like to pull back quite a few of them. So we're going to create another variable here called computer properties and we're going to make it an array just like we did the last time here we're going to list off all the different um, variables that we actually want to bring over so all i'm going to do here is i just want one um, so we're just going to pipe this to a select um, first one here and we're going to go look at all the different properties and seeing what we might actually want to pull out for our dashboard here. Um, so what we actually want to do is I like to always pull back the name. We're going to pull back the name. Um, we're not going to do that uh, first. I do like to kind of pull them more in alphabetical order here. Um, so what we're actually going to go ahead and just see here is let's go through. And the first one that I really like to bring up is going to be the created timestamp here, which is just right here. So let's go here. Let's do create timestamp. That will tell us when the computer was added to Active Directory. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add description. Um, this is in case you do put descriptions uh, for your computers, sometimes that does really, really help, especially if you have like file servers um, or servers that are meant for specific things. Uh, the other one that I really like is the distinguished uh, name. Uh, this way you can get the OU that it's in and everything like that as well. Uh, the DNS host name, I also like to pull back. It's not super necessary since if you have the name uh, you can pretty much figure out the host name as well. I do like to bring in enabled as well. Um, now, there is an IPv4 and IPv6 address. Um, if you do store these, um, it is very, very handy to pull back. So we're going to actually pull these back here. IPv4. address perfect and then the only ones that i really need to pull back now is going to be the name and then i like to bring back a lot of the operating system 
Um, so we're going to bring uh, operating system, operating system service pack and operating system version. Now you can do the hotfix as well if you wish to have that information. Uh, it is definitely never a bad thing to have um, all that different information. Um, if you do think that you actually require it, you can always just limit the table um, as well and just remove it later on. Bring it in at first and then you can decide whether or not you actually want to show it here. Uh, so operating system version and that should be okay. And I think that that's really all that you need. Uh, you can definitely bring in the SID if you would like as well. Uh, but I find like just this is more than enough. And then instead of doing the properties here, uh, so as you can tell, we also did user here. This should actually show uh, user properties. And then this should be uh, computer properties as well. Perfect. So that should actually be good. And then let's just go ahead and let's remove the select first one here. All right, and once we actually bring in our computers, all we need to do is add our object to our entry here. It's just gonna be over here. All I'm gonna do is copy the users one. We're gonna paste it in we're gonna put computers and then put in our variable computer. So now we are actually taking in the computers here. So if we actually run all of this part up here, we should actually be able to see if we go look in our all domain info. Dot computers, we will actually get all the computers here. So that's perfect. So all we actually want to do now is go ahead and scroll down. And right after our groups to monitor, we can actually copy paste this whole section here. We can add this at the bottom and we can decide to put the header text. Let's just put that as computers. And now what we can actually do is then put domain.computers and just see how this looks like. We're gonna have to make some slight modifications most likely, but let's just go ahead and let's see what this actually turns out to be. All right, so we actually have our computers here. We can see um, that even though we did put in those properties, um, everything did come in in the proper order, so that actually looks all good. We did get some extra properties because those are the properties that come with uh, a computer object by default. You'll always bring in the object class, object GUID, um, and then the SAM account name, the SID, and a bunch of different properties here, which these we're actually going to want to clean up because all we want is just a simple view um, for our users to be able to look at all the different computers. But here we can actually see a bunch of the different IP addresses. We can see the IP address of our um, of our DC, and we can see an IP address for our desktop here. Now, sometimes you might see this is displaying improperly. That might just be a configuration in your Active Directory. Uh, sometimes you might not even have an IPv4 configured in your active directory um, so it really depends in my work environment we do not have ipv4s set up in ad um, so be aware that this is a very optional field i don't think that this will really give you a whole lot of benefit um, especially depending on how often you refresh this web page i would definitely create another lookup potentially with dns or dhcp to get the IPv4 addresses of these certain machines. That will give you a more accurate reading. Um, but let's go ahead and let's fix our columns here. So what we'll actually wanna do is very similar to what we did with the users is we created a little table right above. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna create a new variable here called computer or computers table. And we're gonna make that equal to domain.computers. 
and we're going to pipe that to select. And what we're actually going to do here is we are going to select in the order all the different things that we actually want here, which for me, I already have that uh, ready to copy paste in here. Um, so we have select name, operating system, operating system service pack, operating system version, create timestamp, description, distinguished name, DNS, host name, enabled. And all we're going to throw in at the end here is just the IP v4 address. And then all we need to make sure that we do is we do need to change our, ta our data table here. So we're going to change that to computers table. If we go ahead and we run this now, we should see a, a little bit of a better display of our computers. We don't even have a drop down anymore, um, but we can easily see this machine. We can see everything about it. We can see the operating system, the operating system version, uh, the create time. We can see the description if there was one, uh, the distinguished name, the DNS host name. Um, and then whether or not it's actually enabled and then the IPv4 address. Now, what's very handy is let's say you had a lot of systems and let's say uh, you're in an environment that you want to replace all the, we're going to say that we're in the future and we want to replace all the server 2022 is that are on our system. All we can really search is do a windows server 2022. And then we get all the Windows Server 2022. Um, we could just search 2022 as well, and that will work. Um, but the best way to do it, of course, would be Windows Server 2022. And you might even want to um, specify standard or data center, depending. Uh, the one thing that you will want to be aware of is, let's say you have a Windows Server 2003 here for some reason, or 2008 and the create timestamp for that server, we'll just say was 2022 for some reason, it would still come up in the list uh, because it does see Windows Server in the column. And if the create timestamp is 2022, it will come up there as well. So just be aware when you are searching, uh, you might have to just do a more granular search um, as if you were searching for Windows Server 2012, if you have all 2012 R2s. I would recommend adding that R2 and that will just filter out any type of inconsistencies that you might have in that search as well. Now, of course, you might even be able to add something in your dashboard. Um, Cause let's say you're working on a certain project. Uh, maybe you're gonna wanna do a filter directly in your script um, where you only wanna show the computers that have a specific operating system or specific version and then display those in a different table, maybe have it like computers to be replaced. Um, if they have operating system version less than this version or a very specific operating system, you can definitely do that as well. And that would automatically already kind of filter them for your users to be able to see, all right, these are all the computers that we need to replace or perform updates on. Uh, so that is definitely a valid feature here. So in one of our next videos, we're actually going to be displaying users in certain OUs because that was one of the requests that we got. Um, and then another one that I have gotten um, as well is trying to display a calendar with the most recent users created. Um, so we might even do the most recent users created and the most recent computers added into the domain. This way it kind of just does both since we already have users and computers in our dashboard, we're probably gonna do both um, and in one video since they should be fairly similar of how to do them. Um, so those are the two features that we're still gonna be adding into this dashboard. If you guys have anything that you want added in into the dashboard, cause you would think it would be useful for your work environment or your home lab, please let me know in the comment section down below. And also please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.